Guys, today we're going to be doing yet another EDC review on the Spider Co. Paramilitary 2, or possibly one of the most legendary EDC knives out there, because it really is. <laughs> As always, guys, please do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe if you want to see more awesome EDC reviews like this one. So guys, hope you like these tabletop decorations, always trying to keep it fun and interesting for these reviews. Anyways, today in this review, we are going to be taking a look at the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. And this one, of course, is the all blacked out, black G10 handles, and black DLC coated blade. And I've been carrying this, of course, as you guys will probably know if you've around, been around the channel for a few years. This has been my EDC for a few years, and it's kind of getting rotated out, just trying new things, such as another black G10 handled knife, and that is the Benchmade 940 Dash. Two, I think it is and so just trying other things out seeing other competitive options but before we roll into competitive options I just want to talk about this sweet little knife so like I was saying the spider co paramilitary 2 has definitely been a favorite of mine for some solid reasons the first really being that I love the steel the CPM s30v which is also used on several other knives is a really awesome low maintenance steel that has a high performance to it it just really is overall a benchmark now not quite when the knife first came out but definitely a benchmark now for just a quality steel to have in a upper end knife or even a mid-grade knife like this and so i really enjoyed the cpms 30v used it's like i said very low maintenance i've never had to really worry about rust issues especially on this dlc coated one because it's a dlc coated but i've never really had to worry about rust issues never had any rust on it the edge retention just keeps on going and going and going and that's really helped by spider co's very nice i enjoy heavily their full flat grinds because of these guys unlike other companies they grind their flat grinds very thin and very very low so the grind angles are quite low and that helps keeping them very sharp and really easily able to pass through materials. I think you guys could see as I'm rolling in the cutting tests of this knife, just is effortlessly able for the most part to cut through some pretty gnarly uh, cardboard and just some packaging material. And like I said, it just goes through it really easy. And that's because there's not a lot of steel here to really push through your object that you're trying to cut through. In addition to that, I also, as you guys will notice, I'm kind of just playing with it now, but I also really am a huge sucker for the compression lock that Spyderco makes and you never really see compression locks used by other companies. I don't know why Spyderco is the only one that uses them. They are a little bit more complicated to make than a standard lock or you know like a frame lock or a liner lock or even something like this. But the compression lock is a really awesome lock and much like the uh, <clears throat> and much like the access lock here, it's one of those locks that you can open and close one-handed, as you can see. So just like that, you can open and close, if I can get it right here, you can open and close this knife with pretty good ease uh, one-handed. And so I really love the compression lock for that. I also love the fact that the compression lock, while not the most tough lock out there, it is certainly a pretty tough lock to beat. So it, it locks up pretty well. And of course, this knife in particular, no side to side or up and down. So <clears throat> very solid lock. And of course, compression locks are known for being very solid. So those are the primary upsides for me. I really enjoy, um, I really enjoy those the lock and edge retention. Of course, the full flat grind is also really awesome. So another thing is, of course, the tacticalness of this. This is called the paramilitary for a reason. It's not the paramilitary, but paramilitary two for a reason, and that is that it is a little bit more of a tactical knife, as you guys can kind of probably already tell from the gearing of this knife and just how it looks. Uh, of course, the tip has raised a lot of concerns. They are very fragile and quite easy to break. 
leak if not handled properly and people have once again shown that too and it does not take much to break the tip off of a paramilitary two just because they're so thin so precise and unlike something like this there's no reinforcement to this tip here and honestly I will say as far as the tip goes I do actually tend to like something like this a little bit more because the tip on the 940 is very abrupt and very pointed like this is very easy to open things with and still get uh, adequate penetration when you want to uh, actually like stab into something but at the same time it has more steel behind the edge and is better reinforced so it's not as weak as something like this however spider co if you guys really stick around or if you stick around Spyderco, if you do take and notice, Spyderco does have a love for making very delicate tips. There are many knives made by Spyderco that are basically the same like this, that if you tried to really hard use the tip, you would break it. So overall, I'm not super complaining about that. And once again, I've carried this thing for two years now, and the tip is still in just fine condition. Not absolute perfect, but it's not broken off or anything like that so it is just fine and overall you won't have issues with the tip breaking so long as you don't abuse it things that are not present on this knife but things that i do like and i've noticed once again a lot about spider co is the aftermarket on them there's a lot of different ways to trick out paramilitary twos you can get custom handles custom clips you can even get like signet rings for them and you can really just make your spider co paramilitary two your own i think that is one of the most awesome things about the paramilitary two being very popular is that a lot of aftermarket market things have come in to that you can mod or make the paramilitary to really your own even if you get a more base and stock version like this in addition to the paramilitary 2 being more popular they also have several sprint runs that have things like s90v blades and multiple different colored g10 handles different colored blades and just overall once again making every different spider co paramilitary 2 its own kind of unique thing so that is another really big plus to it. So now getting over to competitive options. By the way, I also do really enjoy the weight on this knife, but now getting over into competitive options, things like this Spider, not Spider Go, but Benchmade 940-2 are actually a little bit more expensive than this knife here. And yet they use the same blade, a steel, the same handle materials and multiple different other things that are very similar but i think ultimately the primary reason why something like this is a little bit more expensive is one you're paying for the popularity of this brand everyone loves benchmade and the 940 in particular is a very famous and very ubiquitous uh kind of knife for Benchmade. It's it's really one of their staples. And of course, this is not the 940 just straight, but this is a dash one or dash two, sorry. And so it's one of the many different types of 940s. But even still, I think it might be a little bit overpriced because if you look at it still, and this is the uncoated version, this is a coated version. So the coated version is a little bit more expensive of this. But even still, you can see that this so you can see that they have similar blade lengths, but yet this knife here it will run you around $170, and this one here will run you around $130 to $120, $128-ish. And so, and so there's definitely, this knife definitely comes in at quite a good price, and I think that's another reason why the Paramilitary 2 has been such a perennial favorite by people, is when you get the value of S30V in this blade length, in this overall size, it's really hard to beat. And then you throw G10 slab handles on there, and it just gets harder and harder to beat. Now I will say the traction pattern on the handles is not my favorite. I wish it was a little bit more grippy, but at the same time, this thing has even less grip like these are kind of like polished g10 handles and it has even less grip on it so it kind of is a personal thing if you really do not prefer jimping then this might be a better option to run but for me i do kind of like having a little bit more grip in the knife 
Um, I will say something that I do credit to the Benchmade is the fact that it has more contoured of a handle, unlike this knife, that these are kind of like the whole SE uh, situation. These are just flat slab G10 handles, and I think that helps save on the price because there's no milling or machining that really has to go into these handles. They're just flat slabs. So that is a little bit of a downside, but for the most part, I find it comfortable, and the handle has plenty of room to really sprawl out and choose what kind of choose what you want or how you want to place your hand so it has plenty of room even for larger handed individuals whereas this knife not so much so once again down to personal choices tip strength not being really there i do not really have anything else against the knife once again i am a huge fan of compression lock some people may not like the compression lock but personally i really do like compression locks so for me i do enjoy that and once again it makes it really fun to kind of play with because you can open and close it one-handed and it's just super easy uh, another thing i will i guess kind of say as a negative is if you ever do have to take this knife down because it is a compression lock it's a little bit more advanced than taking something like this down this is a really easy knife to take apart and clean whereas because like I said this is a compression lock it's a little bit more challenging if you do ever want to take it down and clean it so just bear that in mind but aside from that there's really nothing that I have against this knife and I think that's why it's such a popular knife with the knife community as a whole it's a very good value it's also a very good performer and really there's not that much to hate against this knife it's lightweight enough the blade is long enough it's good materials made in the usa so there's really not much to be against here that's basically all i have to say on the spider co paramilitary 2 hopefully you enjoyed this review and as always guys god bless and i'm out